Good afternoon and happy Earth Day. Uh, I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Board of Directors of Community Television of April 22nd, 2019. I just want to make sure I grab the right agenda here. Um, would the Secretary please call the roll? Yes, Chair Maziarz. Here. Director Hall. Here. Director Rand. Here. Director Manhunt. Here. Director Laurent. Here. Director Ojisco. Director Owen. Here. Director Azant Gonzalez. Here. Director Lazener. Lanier. That one is, that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should, that one my last name, it. I should know it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, so um, I think we have a quorum. One, two, three. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we can uh, proceed as the board. And uh, next we'll move on to oral communications. Is there anybody here who'd like to address the board? Um, seeing none, we can move on to no item number three which is consideration of late additions to the agenda, additions and deletions to the consent and regular agendas. Would anybody like to pull anything or add anything to the agenda? All right, seeing none, we can move right along to the consent agenda, which is items four, five, and six. Uh, item four is to approve the minutes from our March 25th meeting. Item five is to approve the recommendation of the Finance Committee to accept the March 2019 financial reports. And item six is to accept the recommendation of the Finance Committee to accept the CTD independent compilation reports for fiscal years 2015, 2016, 2017. And uh, item number seven is the co-working space rental policy. Would uh, one of the members of the Finance Committee care to elaborate on those items? Yes, actually yes. I'd like to just spend a few minutes. First of all, uh, item number six took a lot of work by Mel Sweet who does all the bookkeeping. Uh, it was quite an endeavor and what it involves and I'll sell you the background, is you have to, for every invoice, put the background on it. And sometimes when you have a volunteer organization, the type of background you get can be different. It can be sketchy or voluminous, but mostly uh, somewhere in between. And what my role in, was in it is, I was asked by Mel to come in and go through each of these years' material. What was the most amazing is 2015-16, the amount of work it took, you could see in the paperwork to move over here the bills, the moving, the equipment, and it was all done very well. I found a few little things that were corrected, pretty minor in, in all of the uh, uh, amount of work that was done. And why we're doing this is that we're required to do an audit by the county. However, we have limited income and audit expenses have gone up and up and up over the years. So the county allows you to do a compilation so they can go through and see if you're keeping proper records, you're keeping your invoices are appropriately uh, produced and recorded and it's it's kind of a not a halfway point but it's about three quarters and the big difference is is it's done uh, without a CPA it's done by another CPA but they don't have to do a lot of certifying and because we went through it ourselves we kind of are self-certifying that we're keeping our books in order which we are and I'd like to thank Tom for his work on the Finance Committee and Keith comes to a lot of our meetings and you do too and yeah, that's what it as is. As well was as the chair. Chair, I just pointed to him. <laughs> but, uh, whatever the case, it was a job well done. Uh, we've caught up, which is I think pretty important. And it represents a lot of work of the volunteers, the staff, members of the board, and whatever. But it did save us a fair amount of money being able to do this. And um, anyhow, so I just wanted to do that. One other quick thing, the co-working rental policy is Simply in the Finance Committee, we realized that really, we've been in such a rush to get things done that we didn't really have any policy if somebody was late, how we handled it. So it put the executive director in kind of a funny position of having to kind of negotiate when really that wasn't their role. And so this sets out a policy, it's pretty simple. I mean, if you read it, you'll see that it's, probably any landlord would follow something like this, but it's in writing. So if anybody says why, you can say this is why. So that was that, and also one other thing on the compilations, uh, Keith Gudger also uh, went through the final report to see if there was any particular issues, and it turned out he found one, a number was transposed, and that was corrected. Okay. So, so it's a pretty fine-tooth combed financial documentation. I, I just wanted to add one thing, which is to thank the county for allowing us to do the compilation reports, because um, we had originally committed to do full audits and then over time, as the cost of those audits have sort of escalated and they're, it's harder and harder to find somebody that would do an audit for an organization as small as ours, 
um, <coughs> this really was a, a big step in terms of helping us as well. So thanks to the county. And unless anybody has any questions, <coughs> I'll move the consent agenda. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion by Director Hall and a second by um, Vice Chair Rand. Uh, were there any other questions, comments, or deliberation before I call the vote? Just want to say thank you for all that yeah. time you put into yeah. it. It was interesting. <laughs> I got to live here for a while. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice place to live. Yeah. All right, well, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Seeing none, that carries unanimously. Great, so we can move on to item number eight, which is the oral report for our executive director. Becca, please. <coughs> okay, well, here's our report for April. Um, under financial, the co-working center is on track to be in profit this month. We're like a few dollars away from the exact amount, but we'll get there. We still have you know, two more months, two more weeks, so um, I'm not concerned about that. Um, five new companies slash individuals joined in April, which is good. I think we had five or six last month, so that's always nice. And one day I came in and there it was full. Everybody was, there was people in here everywhere and they were all hard at work and it was very nice. Um, under paid services, we did 17 meetings in April and that's kind of usual for this time of year. We can get up to about 24 during budget season. But the one thing interesting about these meetings is a lot of them were more than eight hours long. One was 12. So there, it's like even only we only did 17 meetings, we did a lot of time, a lot of government hours. And they pay by the hour. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke with one of the, yeah. the folks afterwards. I <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, they're worn out. Yeah, and they don't get dinner that sometimes. So it's uh, hard for us to schedule. We don't know when that's going to happen. It's all about the public comment. So we do our best, and you know, the, we have. We pay our staff a lot of penalties. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so uh, the programming, Victor is still, has almost got the programming scheme done for CMAP. And um, CMAP is bringing on a new person next month. So they'll do a handoff and it should be, uh, we should be, um, CTV will be out of the programming business for CMAP and CMAP will be on its own. And uh, the, um, uh, we have a professional uh, producer who wants to produce something in our studio that I've been working with some time. He was thinking he would do it this month, but he got caught up in some other things, so now they think it'll be next month. But we should have a nice um, series, a short series, kind of like what we would call in TV is a season replacement series. <laughs> like it'll be about six episodes long. So um, it should, that should be great for us. It'll be, uh, and it'll be nice programming for us as well. It'll also go on our station as well as others. Um, our, we held, uh, for under our youth program, we held our equipment um, grant workshop and only three people came and they none were qualified. They did, weren't, weren't nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so we're not sure, we were pretty clear we felt in our, in our um, advertising, but we didn't get it. So I, I think we have to go back to the drawing board and figure out a way where we might target certain organizations and go visit them. I think maybe people don't know or they think it'll be arduous to apply or I'm not sure why people aren't taking us up on this, but um, we're going to take a more proactive approach, I guess. So the people that applied were prof for profit companies or they individuals? Well, or what we did was that every year people send it, usually we get a few applications and they're just not fundable the way they apply. So we thought this year we'll do a workshop and we'll show them exactly what we want and the questions they need to answer and how, what we're really looking for so it wouldn't be kind of a week. And um, the people who came were just, one, one person was just a member who was here for a workshop and we're like, well, it's a workshop about a grant proposal. <laughs> and he was like, oh, well, okay, I didn't get that. And someone else came because they wanted to make a show here. And okay. somebody else, uh, then the other person uh, didn't come, was signed up but didn't come. So, and that person was with a nonprofit. But yeah, so we're having, Sporadic uh, results, but we will, we'll, we'll just have we'll just, ahead. yeah, we'll take another tack. We'll try, try it a different way. Well, and hopefully we'll get the one uh, application from the the first person that right. came to the first uh, workshop that we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did get, yeah, we did two workshops because of this, but then uh, we got a really good uh, uh, an applicant. We all we know we can fund. 
Yep, yep. And other Great than team. being a nonprofit, are there any other qualifications? Oh, quite a number, actually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, they're the obvious ones. They have to be a nonprofit, and then the idea is to teach job skills with television equipment. So they need to um, have experience with teaching mm -hmm. video things and best practices. They can't be working on VHS cameras or something like that. They have to know how to do this and have a real curriculum so kids can pr progress through a series of things, a uh, series of units and graduate out with real skills. And so they have to have a place to keep the equipment that's secure. And um, uh, now those, are the, those are the main ones. Mm -hmm. And the others are, are not that not that unusual, but those are particular to this grant. And so what we find we're having the hardest time with is the, having a curriculum. And a teacher. And a real teacher. Yeah. yeah, a teacher who's assigned to do that and knows that area. So we'll, we'll, we'll take another whack at it, and then maybe we'll next year revise how we do it. But um, we still have, we still have um, dollars to share, so we're hoping that people will take us up on this. How about we take the approach of the credit card companies and send people letters? You're pre-approved <laughs> for uh, <laughs> uh, equipment grant uh, of up to $25,000. You know. uh, okay, so. I like your style, though. <laughs> uh, so let's see, under equipment and facilities, um, we, did, uh, we did a fun thing. We did a... Um, we, uh, the Poppy Jasper Film Festival, which is a regional festival, takes place sort of centrally out of Morgan Hill, but they also are in Gilroy, and one of our CMAP's board members is the director. So we did, CMAP did a lot of things with them this year, but one thing we wanted to do was right down the street from CMAP, they were doing um, two sessions in a, in a restaurant, and they had three hour gap in between the two sessions. So we did a drop-in reception for, for film people during that three hours, and we brought out all our equipment and let them see the space, nice. and um, Ian and I packed up all the good equipment that CTV has, and in a couple of loads, transported it down there, and then Ian made some great flyers and brochures for people, oh, nice. and we did a thing about fiscal sponsorships, and then we, we did an open house, and um, people came in, and thank goodness, um, a volunteer, David Goldman, came and assembled the crane, which took him, which was <laughs> took all his years of experience, uh -huh. and then, um, and uh, Ian assembled, um, the dolly. So we had the dolly and the crane and people could try them out and it was really fun. And we also had our 360 degree camera and we had some the FS7 and a bunch of cool things. And then we CMAP had a drone and a bunch of other things like that in the studio. And so we had a whole bunch of things. And the filmmakers were very excited and they were very excited at the price for the studio. We have people from LA have called asking about the studio. Is this right? <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was good, and we were a, we rented the crane and the dolly. Wow, fantastic! So that was really nice. It was a really fun thing to do. Can and I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm curious. Um, is the does CMAP have a similar studio that they rent it rents out? Yes, but theirs is not as big. It's a twenty by twenty instead of we've got a thirty by thirty here. Mm -hmm. And ours is better equipped. We have a light grid and curtains, and CMAP doesn't. You, okay. It's kind of a blank slate. You have to bring in what you want to uh, use. Okay. So it's a little bit different. But depending on what you want to do, that could be just fine. Mm -hmm. So And photographers use it. Photographers use this studio, too. Right. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, nah, 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 nah. Oh, uh, on the bad news in the equipment front, um, someone broke into our storage unit and stole one of our cameras. So it was the fourth camera in this series that we have that was one of the sports cameras. It's a, to no use to a regular person because you can't shoot with it. It doesn't record mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can't plug it in. It doesn't have batteries. You have to plug it into a control room. So whoever took it is not going to make anything, but I don't think they'll return it. Mm -hmm. So well, if they're watching tonight, oh, they're watching bring tonight. It bring, back. bring it back. <laughs> well, have you, have you uh, looked on say, oh, Craig's, yeah, Craigslist, on and, Craigslist yeah. and eBay? Yeah. Yeah. And Ian called it's all of the camera the shops and let them know about it. We called mm -hmm. all the pawn yeah. shops and alerted them. Mm -hmm. We made a police report. And mm -hmm. as soon as we get the police report back, we're going to um, uh, we'll we'll put it in insurance claim because it's a really well it's a very expensive camera mm -hmm. so we're, we'll put in a claim to get to get paid back and that's sad um, we would be replacing these cameras probably next year anyway mm -hmm. but yeah. so it's not terrible but it's just 
feels very uncomfortable that mm -hmm. someone yeah. broke in. Yeah. So we're also going to make some other changes. We're going to, we have a small room here that we call the server room, where a server is, and there's other things in there, but most of them are paper products and things that, you know, stuff that's not valuable. So we're going to switch out all the, that stuff, we'll put that in the storage mm -hmm. container, mm -hmm. and we'll put the, the dolly and the crane inside that other room. The dolly and the crane are usually in there, but because we did this event, they were not. Oh, wow. So we oh. were kind of lucky. We only lost mm -hmm. one thing. And did the ATEM switcher also. Right. Mm -hmm. Did they take the chairs? They did not. The rack is still there. The chairs have sort of filtered into here. So mm -hmm. there are chairs around here somewhere. No, there were still more chairs there. there oh, there were more? Well, mm -hmm. well. They possibly sold some folding chairs. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. We're very curious. Victor's very curious at what they drove in with because mm -hmm. um, they also took the empty camera cases for these cameras, which are huge. They're uh, about the size yeah. of this oh, table. Wow. The yeah. anvil cases. Yeah. They're uh, they're not anvil. They're I think they came from Hitachi. They have wheels. They stand up. They're almost oh, wow. as tall as me. Oh, wow. and yeah. You can roll yeah. the cameras around because they include the camera, the monitor, and the lens. They're all in there. Mm -hmm. It's a huge, and they're made for shipping, so they're all padded. Mm -hmm. and, Wow. And they're cutouts just for those cameras. We so have one in the equipment room in which we have some three lights. Yeah, so it's, at a, least it's like that. It's yeah. A, yeah, it's a very, very good. Yeah, probably very oh, expensive. Oh, it's a thousand dollar case. Yeah, yeah. they're oh, very wow. expensive. So that's mm -hmm. sad. Yeah. But um, we'll we'll make some changes so that that doesn't happen again. There won't be anything of value in that container anymore. This is a good storage area. Mm, was yeah, it just a padlock on there? Or? Oh gosh, no. no we no, had no, a no. tremendous amount of security. Really? They came and spray painted the cameras that were pointed at it. Oh, really? And then they had bolt cutters, and we had four mm. locks on it. Mm. Two, two were resistant to bolt cutters, and two were really hard to, uh, the combination was impossible to, to, to hack. Wow. And they worked on it with the bolt cutters for a long time and couldn't get in. But what they finally did was the hasp, the circle where the the locks mm, went through. Mm. They worked on that, and they nipped and nipped and nipped at it with oh, the bolt cutters, wow. and finally they got some sort of pry thing, and were able to break it open. Oh, so I mean, the storage locker is, is has to be repaired as well. Well, it's got four hasps on it, so I think when we're just keeping our extra paper towels in there, we mm -hmm. can probably just use a couple locks and uh, not worry about that one. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and if something else happens, then we will get a storage unit like everyone else has in a secure place, mm -hmm. and we'll just have to drive to it. So. Wow. That's unfortunate. Yeah, we just don't have a lot of storage inside the building. Mm -hmm. ah, so there you go. Also, uh, the process to bring fiber to our building is still in process. <laughs> I got another note from Bart and James telling me that pg e is still reviewing it. And his good news was they haven't said no. No, nah, PG, I'm just curious, is pg e interviewing because we have to use their conduit or something oh, like something that? Something like that, yeah. I it's think some it's kind the of pole Either the pole, maybe ah. the pole at the corner. Oh, okay. Possibly. Right. Yep. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know in the corner of ocean is the is is where the fiber is. Yeah. So it might be either the pole or the trench, but whatever it is, they they have the power. They're not in a hurry to help us. Mm -hmm. um, also under under government uh, communications, I sent off our annual uh, kind of our annual report to the board of supervisors this month. Every year, I write them a letter and tell them what we've done this year and what we plan to do next year. And I send them our budget after you guys approve it. So that's happened, and that's off. And uh, the board of supervisors will approve it in May. Yeah, one quick question: Are you going to be at that meeting, or? Well, they, I'm. I went to the first two, yeah. and then Kevin said not to worry about the next oh, one, okay. so I didn't go. And sometimes, if they ask me to go, I go. Okay. And um, they haven't asked me in the last. I was still thinking if you needed a board member to go with you, but oh, if thank you. you. If We've you come don't. in the past. Yeah, yeah. Well, if they ask me to go, okay. I will. So okay. one time, it, I, twice I've given a presentation, but the last two times they haven't asked me to. So yeah. we'll. Um, and maybe the city might ask. So one time I went to the city also. I went to the county well, twice in the city just once. Just one member, you know. You, you and I went, yeah. Yeah, right. let us know and one of us, if we have time, can yeah. go along so you're not just there you know, by yourself. I appreciate that. Thanks yeah. very much. If they ask me, I, I'll give you a call. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we also sent out a letter to our government service people that we're raising our rate a little bit. We do that every year, just trying to get them up to the actual cost it is to do the meetings. And this is our, I think this is our third year of raising that rate. 
just a tiny bit so that they can, and they know, because, well, you got the letter. <laughs> I, I, I send them every year and I warn them, but I, in the first one, we told them what we would do, and it would take, I think, seven years to get up there. <laughs> so we're, we're working toward it. Um, um, publicity, we've done, we're still doing First Friday, and it's really been a good thing for us. We get a lot of different kinds of people in, and this month we're having a photographer, which we're really excited about because she does a lot of great nature, nature photography, mm -hmm. and, a lot, and she gives a percentage of everything she earns from her photographs to uh, the Nature Conservancy, I think, mm -hmm. or, or, or something like that, maybe yeah. Save Our Shores, but she does something nice with it for the animals, and uh, her name is Emily Pomeroy. And um, we are anxious to get photographers in. We hope that she'll bring her photographer friends because we have photography equipment. And mm -hmm. so we want people to know what we do here. Mm -hmm. And that gives us an opportunity to show off what we're doing. So we're doing that. And um, we also, last time we had um, this really interesting artist who did all of these things that you've seen out there. She sold a ton mm -hmm. at First Friday. So we're really excited that we could help the artist um, make some sales. And a lot of people got to see the really simple video place during that. Keith kindly demonstrated that for people while they were here, so they got so we got a really good introduction. Someone has rented it, um, booked oh, it, excellent. and uh, we also well that was it. And uh, we also did we also do um, uh, we always do virtual reality because that's sort of wow thing. It's the wow factor. Mm. How much do we rent it for? Is it by the hour or? It's by the mm. hour. It's twenty five dollars an hour. Wow, that's very reasonable. Yeah, yeah. We we want to make it. You know, reasonable. That's because we're a nonprofit, so mm -hmm. people Make come in, and yeah. use the equipment, and we're hoping we can train businesses how to do it, so that they can yeah. include messages on their websites, and and uh, people can do little videos. I will recommend it emails. to people. Yeah, please. Oh yeah, you're to, to put yeah. it on their yeah a little yeah. video on their website yeah. from the chairman or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I think it'd be great to have because you know people have a hard time maybe thinking of what how to use it. And the more that yeah. people mm -hmm. use it, we'll have more more ideas about how to yeah. use it. And that's yeah. one of the ideas. And the other is explainers. If you have something in your business you're Product, trying to explain, yeah. pro products that you can demonstrate. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, Barbara Springer, who is uh, our partner, is going to use it to do a series of um, trainings? explainers on uh, trainings on how to use her software. Mm -hmm. So um, Keith kindly set up two profiles in our equipment. One is to just to use it the regular way, where you record yourself, and one is to record um, a browser screen. So if you wanted to demo software or show people how to use your website, you can do it that way. And we're working on getting a, we've got an idea for a prompter situation. So mm -hmm. we're, we're working on that now. So it should be. Ever really evolving, fun. huh? It is. Well, you know, there's so much technology. And if you, I used to, when I, well, I was a theater arts major, and one time uh, when in one of my early classes on how to build things, uh, the teacher said, if you're ever thinking, if only there was a tool who does this, there probably is. <laughs> and it's kind of like that in technology now. If ever you, you, know, if you think that if there was only a tool that would put captioning on your browser screen, there is. Mm -hmm. So now we're, we're looking into that. And so we, we're, um, Keith is really great about taking ideas and figuring out the technology part. So mm -hmm. this has been a, a good, it's been a great, uh, a great thing for all of us. And I think it's gonna help the community. So that's, that's my report. Excellent. Right. Thank you very much, Becca. <coughs> Any further questions from the board? Mm -hmm. No. All right, moving onwards. Uh, mm -hmm. Item number nine is a report from the Ad Hoc Strategic Planning Committee. Um, I know that's still in process. Is there anything to report back? or We're going to keep you in suspense. Keep but us I can tell you that we are, we are continuing we're to meet. Um, we're meeting, <laughs> <actually>. <laughs> we're meeting uh, every other week, and we'd hope to finish in April. Um, we won't. Okay. <laughs> but, but it's all good. It's yes. all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's really, really good progress. Yeah. We're highly productive. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not over budget, then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> budget? <laughs> we got a budget? <laughs> uh, free bagels uh, every Tuesday? No, right. Free <laughs> bagels every Monday. Yeah. Free bagels every Monday. So. <laughs> well, we don't meet on Monday. Oh, well. Mm, that's. Free apple. Okay. There's a free apple. <laughs> oh, it's coffee. On Friday, we do espresso. Mm -hmm. Ah, there we go. Um, okay, well then uh, we will uh, wait eagerly um, further uh, news from that committee. Um, do we have any uh, summaries from the board retreat subcommittees? We've heard about the RSVP, which was one of them. Um, we've completed our first uh, uh, equipment lease. And um, was Jan there anything else? Janice was, would be here to talk right. about what 
the just library. Happened to the library. Yeah. And I think we'll just postpone that report that yeah. she's here. Great. Okay. Well, then we will check that off and move on to item number 11, which would be the uh, oral report from the Volunteer Advisory Committee. Was the uh, Volunteer Advisory Committee chair uh, care to comment? Sure. Yes. So we met and we, we, uh, we discussed some plans uh, for a producer uh, manual, for a new producer manual. Uh, some of our members uh, ca came together, actually quite a large group, and they uh, wrote up something that uh, they're continuing to work on. And so hopefully it will be a good uh, model for people who come in. It's basically a lot of the stuff that we have been doing, but it was never written down uh, in, in a sense where you know, people could have access to it. Mm -hmm. So that was very good. And um, we also decided that we are starting up again our orientations. You know, winter's over, rain is done, more or less. So uh, Keith and I are going to do an orientation. Um, Boy, I don't remember. It's on oh, our well, website. It's on our website. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. Orientation for community members. It doesn't cost anything. And then uh, Frank, and uh, who's here, and Michael and I will do a uh, camera class, studio camera class. Mm -hmm. um, and we hope to do that on May 18th. I still have to hear from Michael. But Frank and I can do the May 18th. Um, and then for the rest, um, we will ask for another uh, field camera class, and oh. I don't remember when we said we. I think we said we're going to do it every two or three months. Yeah, we need to do it soon. I yeah. think because Rusty will go out with the Grateful Dead soon. Uh, I think it'd be in, like in June. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. So we can do it in May. Also? Maybe. I will. I don't know. It's no, no. Calendar. Maybe. Maybe. I have a hard time keep talking my own calendar. <laughs> 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 but I'll, I'll remind him. I'll see if he wants to do it sometime between yeah. now and. That'll be good. Now when he goes, when yeah. he goes. Mm -hmm. so that would be nice because then in May we have, you know, basically the end of April, beginning of May, we'll have an orientation, studio camera class, field camera class, and Keith will probably, if there is interest, uh, set up another uh, studio audio class, mm -hmm. and maybe you will come too and delight people <laughs> with your skills. I'd be happy to. I, I know to. you've done a great job with that. Um, so that's basically my report, and awesome. that's there some questions. I had a question. <laughs> so if um, you talked about the orientation class, I wonder if you could say a little more about who Absolutely. might be interested in it and what, what it's about. So this one is for the general public. You know, we've done in the past a special one for nonprofits, mm -hmm. and that will come uh, at a later point. But people will pr basically come with questions, and we ask them, you know, what they're here for. But we'll, we run them, we show them some equipment, we tell them what we do here, who we are, what we do here, and how they can get involved, and what it takes to be a volunteer. So it's member. for people who are interested in, in learning about TV production or getting involved with operating a TV station. Exactly, and also uh, if they want to learn uh, field camera and mm -hmm. you know how 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 do we do that with the rentals and things like that mm -hmm. and how how the classes work. Mm -hmm. So basically, if they come and say, you know, I always wanted to do this, and sometimes you know we have mothers and sons coming in, and fathers with daughters and vice versa, um, and they take the classes together and it's really a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So I highly encourage people to come to just check us out mm -hmm. and. Um, and then for nonprofits, we'll do a more detailed one <coughs> where we actually have some showing of how to how to do video with your um, yeah you, your iPhone or your right. Samsung or whatever that is. Right. So yeah, we just want to make sure that people have an idea how they can easily do TV mm. or record things to put on YouTube or whatever it is. Mm. Creative expression. Wow. And is it um, is the uh, orientation a prerequisite for taking the more detailed audio the camera? It's not, okay. but it's you know because it's when people when people come to the camera class, they start to ask us all these questions, mm -hmm. and then we say, "That's in the orientation." <laughs> but that's in the orientation, mm -hmm. and we give them some information. Mm -hmm. But uh, most actually, a lot of the people that have taken the orientation then sign up for the studio camera class. Mm -hmm. So that's why we do it after mm -hmm. the orientation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. 
Right? People have so right. much fun here, right, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> He's smiling. He's smiling. <laughs> he is smiling. We have a lot of fun. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Matilda. Appreciate that. Um, great. If there's no further questions or comments, we can move on to the item number 12, the oral report of the board chair. Um, so now that we have our, our first uh, uh, equipment lease program in, the, in, in uh, under our belts, I was hoping to reach out to some other nonprofits. Um, I contacted the Moss since I had worked with them uh, a little bit on the Memorial for Peter McGett again and trying to keep the dialogue going. And they're uh, currently in the process of finding a new executive director. Please don't <coughs> leave us, Becca. Um, <laughs> But uh, they are, uh, so they're holding off on any sort of equipment purchases until after that. But, um, you know, I do definitely want to keep those channels of communication open. Um, and I reached out to an, another local nonprofit who I knew, uh, know was looking at doing a large equipment purchase. And um, hopefully I can meet with them, uh, maybe with Becca in the next couple of weeks. And, um, and then uh, yeah, one, one other one, which uh, I think would be a, a great candidate. So. Um, hopefully we can nurture those um, uh, relationships yeah, sure. and um, see what comes of that. Uh, sure. So that was, is it for me, um, unless anybody has any questions. No? All right, so uh, item number 13 would be board member or staff request for specific items to appear on the next meeting agenda. Are there any items which we need to add? No? All right. Um, so we can quickly move on along to announcements. Um, any board members have any announcements? We, we've mentioned there is, check the website for the orientation. Um, you don't want to miss that. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank our crew tonight, which would be Linda Janakis, Keith Gudger, Karen Scott, David Goldman, and Frank Turner. Um, Thank you. That is that. And item number 15 is adjournment. Is there a motion for I'll adjournment? I'll move that we adjourn. Vice Chair Rand, is there a second? I second. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> second by Jennifer, uh, Jennifer second. Uh, not all at the same time. By Director Isaac Gonzalez. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 <coughs> opposed? All right, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>